Now let us come to primary sector. When we produce goods by exploiting natural resources, it is an activity of the primary sector. Example Agriculture, Dairy Farming, Mining, Plantation, etc. Primary sector produces natural goods. The cultivation of land and breeding of animals and plants to provide food, fiber, medicinal plants and other products to sustain and enhance life is known as agriculture. India is the second in the world in crop output next to China. 1.4 million square kilometers of land in India is under cultivation. Agriculture is India's biggest economic sector and employs 52.1% of total workforces. Primitive subsistence farming. It is an old method of farming. It is done on small patches of land. It depends on natural fertility of soil. It depends on rain for irrigation. Its output is low, that is low productivity. It is a method to grow for self, that is for family. The major example of Primitive subsistence farming is slash and burn, also known as zooming. Intensive subsistence farming It is a labor intensive type of farming. It gives out higher output from small land holding. It requires high doses of biochemical inputs and irrigation. The small land holdings are due to right of inheritance that is division of land among successive generations. There is enormous pressure on agricultural land in intensive subsistence farming. Commercial Farming It involves the growth of single crop on large tract of land. It requires higher doses of modern inputs, for example, high yielding variety of seeds, chemical fertilizers, insecticides, pesticides, etc. It is done in order to obtain high output. This type of farming is done for market. Plantation is also a part of commercial farming. It produces raw materials for industries. Rice is the main staple crop of India. Rice is a Kharif crop. It requires temperature above 25 degrees Celsius with high humidity. The annual rainfall required is more than 100 cm and it grows well on alluvial soil. The area of production of rice are plains of north and northeastern India, coastal areas and deltaic regions, the states of West Bengal, Andhra Pradesh, Punjab, Tamil Nadu and Kerala.
Wheat is the second staple crop of India. It is a rubby crop. It requires 50 to 75 cm of annual rainfall and cool growing season and bright sunshine at the time of ripening. It grows well on alluvial loamy soil. It grows in the state of Punjab, Haryana, UP, Bihar and Rajasthan mainly. The areas of production of wheat are Ganga Satluj plains in the northwestern black soil region of Deccan. Jowar is a millet crop. It is a rain-fed crop grown in moist areas. Maharashtra is the largest producer followed by Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh. Bajra is another millet. It grows well on sandy soil and shallow black soil. Rajasthan is the largest producer of bajra followed by Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Gujarat and Haryana. Ragi is also a millet crop. It grows in dry region, grows well on red, black, sandy, loamy and shallow black soil. Karnataka is the largest producer of ragi, followed by Tamil Nadu, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Sikkim, Jharkhand and Arunachal Pradesh. Maize is a kharif crop. It requires 21 to 27 degrees Celsius while growing. It grows well on old alluvial soil. In Bihar, it is grown as rabi season crop. It also grows in UP, MP, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. Tea is a beverage crop and India is the leading as well as exporter of tea in the world. It grows well on well-drained soil, rich in humus and organic matter. Tea requires warm, moist, frost-free days and frequent showers evenly distributed over the years. Tea grows well in Assam, hills of Darjeeling and Jalpaiguri in West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Himachal, Uttarakhand, Meghalaya, Andhra Pradesh and Tripura. Coffee is also a beverage crop. It requires cool climate. It grows well in hilly region on well-drained soil. Coffee is grown in Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Cotton is a fiber crop. It grows in Kharif season. It requires an average temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and rainfall about 100 cm. It requires 210 frost-free days and cotton grows well on black soil. Cotton is grown in India in Maharashtra, Gujarat, MP, Punjab and Haryana.
Jute is another fiber crop. It is also grown in Kharif season in India. It requires temperature on an average 25 to 30 degrees Celsius and rainfall between 150 to 200 cm. It grows well in well-drained fertile soil. In India, jute is grown in Bengal, Bihar, Assam, Odisha and Meghalaya. The following are the institutional reforms done in India in agriculture. Number 1 is collectivization and consolidation of land holdings were done to make them economically viable. The green revolution based on the use of packaged technology and the white revolution to increase milk production has been implemented. Cooperation with farmers and abolition of zamindari system has took place. Provision of crop insurance to protect the farmers against losses caused by natural calamities that is drought, flood, cyclone, fire and disease has been made. Establishment of Gramin Banks, Cooperative Societies and Banks, Kisan Credit Card, Personal Accident Insurance Scheme has been set up. Special weather bulletins and agricultural programs for farmers on radio and TV is forecasted to help them. Announcement of minimum support price, remunerative and procurement prices for crops to check the exploitation of farmers is done. Following are the impact of globalization on agriculture. Under globalization, particularly after 1990, the farmer in India have been exposed to new challenges of land degradation along with changing market conditions. Despite being an important producer of rice, cotton, rubber, tea, coffee, jute and spices, our agricultural products are not able to compete with the developed countries because of the highly subsidized agriculture in those countries. To make agriculture successful and profitable, proper thrust should be given to the improvement of the condition of marginal and small farmers. There is a prevailing demand for organic farming because it is practiced without factory-made chemicals such as fertilizers and pesticides. Indian farmers should diversify their cropping pattern from cereals to high-value crops. This will increase incomes and reduce environmental degradation simultaneously.